Hello everyone, and thanks for joining us today for another I Get It Live session. Today we're going to be taking a look at split lines for surface breaks on SOLIDWORKS parts. This allows you to basically divide a SOLIDWORKS surface into multiple sections for all kinds of purposes. My name is James Keller. I'm an instructional designer and certified SOLIDWORKS subject matter expert here at I Get It, and I'll be guiding you through this today. Shouldn't take too much of your time, maybe 15 or 20 minutes today. It's not too long. So what are split line features? In a nutshell, uh, the split line tool allows you to project a sketch or 3D edge geometry onto a surface or curved planar face, which then divides it into multiple areas, depending on the sketch geometry you're using. Some of the benefits can include making a material separation on a continuous surface where you might not actually have feature geometry to define that material separation for you. Um, you can use it to create custom graphics. So rather than using decals where it just kind of projects a picture or wraps a picture around your model, you can actually use the split line tool to create model geometry for your graphics. And you can use it as a regular modeling tool. So just in the day-to-day -day modeling that you might encounter, maybe it'll help you create the design intent you're looking for and use that as part of your regular modeling arsenal. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you an example of all three of those things today. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into SOLIDWORKS here uh, in our first model example here. We're gonna look at this detergent bottle. So you can see here that it's uh, mostly a surface model. Uh, and uh, after all the features have been added, we end up with just two different solid bodies, okay? So what I want to pay attention to first is how we created this indention here for this label that you see in the front and the back. Um, that was created by using a split line. So let's go ahead and switch over. I'm going to control tab to an earlier version of this model. And you can see that I have my feature manager uh, moved up to just below the split line feature. So you're not seeing any of that added stuff after the split line. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I use the split line to create that indention. So first off, um, if we t pay attention to the surface bodies up here, you can see that we have five surface bodies. Uh, one of them is hidden right now. Uh, if I move my feature manager split there above the split line and remove that from the model, we're still reading five surface bodies. So one of the cool things about split lines is that they don't actually create any new surfaces, whether the face is surface geometry or the face is part of 3D geometry. It's going to divide it up into multiple surfaces that you can select, um, but it won't actually create an additional body, surface body, or uh, mess with any of your solid bodies. So that's kind of a neat thing. Uh, if I go ahead and move the feature manager back below the split line, you can see that as soon as I start to select the model, I have these different selectable faces. And uh, you can see that each time I select one, it's still selecting the split line face up here, which is basically what it auto automatically named uh, these three faces uh, that are continuous after I created the split line feature. If I move that back up, you can see just one one continuous surface right here uh, which was renamed from fillet one to split line after I created it so let's go ahead and step through the different um, uh, levels of uh, the split line and show you how I created that depression so first off I went ahead and created this sketch and the sketch doesn't need to be uh, anywhere but um, in plane with the feature you want to affect. So in this situation, I just went ahead and made sure it was uh, on the front plane. And I'm gonna be able to use that front plane sketch to project that sketch geometry onto either side of this bottle. So using the single sketch, I can create both split line features in one feature. So I jump in here and edit this. I can show you a little bit about that. We've got the sketch here in pink, 
and then the face is basically this continuous face, this one surface here that's the majority of the bottle face. And after it completes, you can see that it then divided up the surface accordingly. Okay, so starting off with this first side, I went ahead and did a, a surface offset of that little section surface there. And that's a surface offset inside the bottle so you can't see it. Then I deleted the face, the original face, and now you can see that we have a little bit of a offset there between those two faces. Okay. To take that a little bit further, I went ahead and trimmed around this new face that I offset based on that split line. And it's kind of starting to shape up here, you can see. Went ahead and did a boundary surface to connect those two surfaces. And can't mirror that, so I'm just going to go ahead and repeat those same features on the other side to create that other indention. And so, as you can see, using this original split line, you know, feature here, differentiate that section of that face, I was able to create those indentions. And then I move on further to knit all those together and apply some more features and eventually combine everything and thicken everything up to make a solid thin shelled plastic model. All right, so that's the first example of how you can use the split line just kind of in your everyday modeling, you know, just to kind of help you achieve the design intent you're looking for. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use a split line again to create just a simple material separation. So uh, even though we have a continuous surface here, uh, I want to kind of show a little transparent strip along this handle here so someone could look at this bottle and say, oh, you know, this is how much you know, detergent I have left in it. It's kind of a common thing for this type of bottle design. So I'm just going to look at this. I think we're going to have to look at it from the side here. And I'm going to just draw a simple sketch real quick and we'll do it on the right plane. So I'll click the right plane over here, choose a new sketch. Let's start with just a midpoint line so I can make that initially related to my origin here. And without it snapping to all kinds of geometry, let's see if I can just go ahead and make that horizontal. Okay. Then I'm going to make a vertical relationship between that midpoint and my origin, and that's just going to snap down some lines. Now what's cool about this is since it's essentially projected geometry, uh, it doesn't matter if you know your sketch geometry goes past the intended projection point. In fact, sometimes it's better practice if it does. So I'm just going to make sure that my sketch points extend past the plane which I want to project this onto. And then I'm just going to add a couple of dimensions here to finish things up. I won't fully define the sketch, but I'm going to get it pretty close to fully defined. I'm going to have that uh, reveal only about three millimeters wide. And let's make that 70 millimeters from the origin point there. All right. So I think that's all I really need to define. It's mostly defined. And you can see that that point right there is not stretching down past the face I want to project onto. So I'm going to make sure that that does just by pulling it down. Exit my dimension tool. There we go. Now, without even exiting the sketch, I can go straight into the um, straight into the split line command. So I'm going to go to the features tab in the command manager and under the curves drop down, we have split line. I'll go ahead and select that. It auto selected the sketch for me and now I need to do is select the surface to project onto which is that right there go ahead and make sure that I'm get, looking at it in the correct way here I do want to project this in a single direction I don't want to project it on this back surface as well I just want it on this side of the surface so toggle single direction and make sure that the arrow is pointing in the, the correct direction just go ahead and hit OK all right so I don't have 
uh, edges showing right now, but if I go ahead and change that, you can see that that face has been now divided up. Okay, So I can select that face and now go over to my appearances and we'll just apply a clear plastic material to that. So we've got clear plastic. It's kind of a frosted plastic when you see them uh, manufactured. So let's just go ahead and double click that because I have the option selected. And there you go. You can see that it's now showing through the bottle, kind of applied a little bit of a clear look to that section. So I can go back, hide my edges, and there we go. You can see a little bit more design intent there. And uh, I was able to create that material separation, basically a material break pretty easily. All right, so that's the first two examples. Uh, let's go ahead and go into how to create some graphics using this tool. So go ahead and switch over to this uh, Pine Derby uh, model here. You can see that I've applied some graphics to it. Um, just some simple stuff, little checker option here, and then these racing stripes with a number. So uh, you can see that just when I'm highlighting over it that I can select these graphics. They're actually different faces. So not like you would have uh, in a decal or just a flat appearance. So this allows me to have, uh, you know, graphics appear on my model, not only being built into the model geometry itself, but just being a little bit more deliberate with the way I want them to look. So let's go ahead and go through how I achieve this real quick. Uh, let's switch over to the base model here. And you can see that I have five or four sketches rather here uh, prepared already. Uh, you guys are professionals, I'm sure. You don't need to learn how to sketch at this point. So in the interest of saving time, I just pre-sketch these out. So let's go ahead and start by pulling down the feature manager to reveal sketch 25 here. And you can see this is the most complicated one. And again, it's similar to the body or to the um, detergent bottle. I just created this sketch on the central plane here. Um, and in this case, I think that's the uh, front plane. So that's gonna get me the split lines I need for both sides of this model. So I'll go ahead and um, this time, let's go up here and do the command search, which is another way to find commands. And we'll just type in split line or SPL to get split line and select it. And then ask me for a uh, sketch for this projection method uh, and by the way we're just going to be looking at the projection method today uh, silhouette and intersection can provide you different options uh, but for the purposes of the lesson today we're just going to be looking at projection so I'm going to go ahead and select this sketch select any of the entities we'll select the whole sketch and then I'm going to go ahead and select all of the surfaces or the faces I want to split so maybe I'll look at that sketch normal just to make sure I'm get, getting everything. I want that face. I want to make sure that that face and this face down here is selected. But I also want to rotate around and ensure the same faces on the opposite side are selected because uh, I'm going to have those lines projected there as well. I got to make sure this guy right here is selected. And I think that's everything. So I'll go ahead and click OK to complete the command. And you can see I have edges turned on for my visibility. You can see that all that geometry was created as expected. Let's go ahead and keep on moving on and apply these other three options here. So this next sketch is going to be the top portion. Um, you can see that I've used uh, some text here to create this, um, got a number six, and basically I just use a little construction geometry to help me place that. I'm gonna say okay there. Now, before I even exit the command, again, we'll just jump right into features, curves, split line. Okay. Again, all I gotta do is select the, the face to project onto. And there we go. I'm going to do a quick rebuild. 
and we've got the number six there. All right, now if I had applied the number six here in this original drawing, um, you might have guessed by now that that would have just been reversed over here. So that's what these other two sketches are, are just separate instances of that number six. So I'll just go ahead and in this case, select both the sketch and the surface at the same time, and then jump right into split line. And you can see the SOLIDWORKS figures it out for me. All I gotta do is hit okay, and there we go. I'll do the same thing again for that last number six. Split line, okay, and there we are. All right, so we can see we got pretty much everything as uh, intended. Looks like I missed a little bit of geometry on this second option here. So let's just go ahead and jump in there and edit the feature. And you can see that all I need to do is just add the face here to project that sketch geometry to complete this wrap around. And we'll click OK. And there we have it. Everything as intended. So uh, if you guys haven't uh, had much practice applying materials, we'll go ahead and just go through that real quick. Uh, to wrap up this this example. So I'm just going to do some pre-selections here since these faces are all now separate and again you can see no surfaces were created. I don't have any extra surface bodies up here. It's just divided those faces for me. So I'm just going to pre-select all the things that I want to be colored white in this graphic. So the islands and the sixes and then the rest of my racing stripe here. And there we are. So I'm just going to go ahead and go over to Appearances. And in this case, I'm just going to go to the top level Appearance folder and double click to apply color, just basic color, to my selections. And there's that basic color applied. Okay. Now all I have to do is go over to the Appearance Manager, the Display Manager here, and double click that color I just applied. To edit it and I'll make it white instead of gray and there we go I'm all finished up we'll continue on and do the black color next so again I'm gonna pre-select control select all the faces I want to be black again double click to apply color and then double click to edit that color making it black. All right, so you can see how easy this is, right? So depending on how complex your graphic is or your sketch geometry is, uh, you can create pretty unique custom graphics and they're built into your model. Now, uh, I'm using basic SOLIDWORKS appearances here. So if you share this model um, and someone else has basic SOLIDWORKS appearances, which they most likely would, then everything's just gonna come through no problem. Often when you have decals, you're gonna have to make sure you bundle up that decal when you share the model for it to appear right. So this is kind of a cool way to just ensure that things look the way you intend them to on your model, especially when they're shared. Let's go ahead and just finish this off by applying that uh, little checkered area back here at the end. Again, I'm gonna pre-select these side faces. I'm going to do it for both sides. Okay. And I'm going to apply the top level texture here. It's just this checker thing. So I double check that to apply it. And it looks like it applied pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and again in the appearance manager double click the texture to edit it. And from the mapping tab, I'm just going to want to ensure that I'm doing a planar mapping option here. And you can see that I have my little scale manipulator down here. I want about five squares across the width here. So I'm just going to adjust that to where I get that to look just about five squares. So we got one, two, three, four, five squares. Looks good. I'll click OK. Now the reason I didn't apply that texture here is because it's using a projected method. So it's basically kind of like a decal would. It's just projecting that decal across any surface in this one vector. 
so uh, in the z vector so if i were to actually just say drag this texture over to this face and apply it you can see that it's making that look like line geometry based on how this ends up hitting this top face so we'll undo that and we're just going to apply another instance by selecting the face and then again double clicking the texture all right you can see it almost applied it perfectly right off the bat and all i got to do is just jump in there and i don't even need to go to the mapping tab necessarily i can just grab this manipulator and adjust it as required all right so I think that pretty much covers my graphics and you can see how easily I got from here to basically my final product here so um, that was the gist of it not too much to it kind of a neat little trick uh, with the split line command there Hopefully we've taught you guys a few things that you can use in the future. And if you'd like me to answer any questions for you, go ahead and enter them in the comments area and I'll do my best.